Geography is all around us, in the towns we inhabit, the streets where we live, in the country and at the coast where we work and play. Yet according to Ofsted, only one third of primary school pupils do well in geography and many teachers are nervous of it. So today, this man is taking the subject on. Sam Jones is Geography Coordinator at St Leonard's Church of England Primary School in Exeter. Geography can be a worrying subject for a lot of people. Um, I myself disliked geography immensely when I was at school, um, so I never took geography beyond the age of 14. I actually really enjoy geography now because I like to enthuse the children learning about people and places. I also think it really broadens their horizons and also makes them perhaps interested in travel, especially with uh, the opportunities we have for travel today. Sam will demonstrate how he delivers the key stage two topic, investigating the local environment. This program contains the highlights of lessons and a field trip that run over a day and a half but the detailed lesson plans and worksheets are on the teacher's TV website. During their inquiry, the class will undertake an environmental assessment of the locality. The task they've been set is to find out whether environmental quality is better around the school or by the River Quayside, and to attempt to explain why differences occur. The work includes a field trip to survey local streets and mark them against selected criteria which measure environmental quality. And back in class, they'll present their data, evaluate their findings and reach a conclusion. David Weatherly, Devon's geography advisor, works across England on the reshaping of the teaching of geography. He supported Sam Jones in planning the environment work and he'll evaluate it with him and with Natalie Toulson, geography coordinator from another Exeter primary school, St Michael's. I want you to think about a street that you would really like to live in. What I'd like you to do is shut your eyes and picture in your head what that street would look like. I'm going to count to three and by three I want you all to have your eyes closed. I want you to picture yourself walking down this street. It's the nicest street or one of the nicest streets you've ever been in. I want you to picture all the things that make it such a nice street. Actual physical things or what is not in your street? Is it that that makes your street so nice? What this street hasn't got? Right, well done everybody, heads up. What I'm going to get you to do is tell me which of the things on the board are the most important things that make that street an attractive place to live. But I want you to do it, and I've got you to do that visualising in your head, because I want this to be you doing the thinking, Tasheen. Not what your parents might say, but what you would like. From the criteria set on the board, the class work in pairs, but are invited to make individual choices on the top 10 factors that most appeal in an attractive place to live and give them a score. What do you recommend? Safe places to cross. You like it to be close, you think it's quite important to be close yeah, to the local shops? Yeah, pretty farm gardens is the best one because get, oh, no. children get to play in And in fact, pretty front gardens scored highly when the children voted for their most attractive street. No air pollution, though, got the highest score. It gave the children a whole range of different criteria from, from which to, to choose. Um, what interests me there is, is, I mean, did you think um, perhaps an, another way of doing it might have been um, to have got the children to generate ideas themselves and then sort of whittle down the, the, the shortlist from that? 
That that would be another way of doing it. Um, the reason we did it this way was because, well, we had to fit the work within a certain amount yeah. of time. Yeah, sure. The focus of it was the field visit, and we had to give ample time after the field visit to put it all within context and come up with the final answer to our hypothesis. And so if we had another lesson, perhaps another hour, we could have then asked the children to come up with their own criteria. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it also maybe pointed them in directions that they otherwise wouldn't have thought of. Um, perhaps the children may not have come up with no air pollution as, a, as one of the first things that they were thinking of, but as it happened, when it was suggested to them, that the, when they voted, that actually, um, as a pleasant surprise, ended up being the most popular criteria. Hey. With the criteria agreed, they've generated the means to test the quality of the local environment. The intrepid Sam has planned a field trip, and nothing, not even West Country rain, is going to put him and his group off. The rest of the class are also out and about in different streets. Now, what would you give this road here out, out of 10 for noise, for uh, perhaps for noise, but also for air pollution? Mmm. Well, if it's no air pollution, I wouldn't give it very much. Now, no graffiti. Well, we can't see any, can we? So maybe we ought to rate that quite high. If there isn't any, then what do we have to give it? 10. Do we think they're nicely decorated? Yeah. What would we give these out of 10? ten. Ooh, 9 or 10. Why do you think people might want to live by the water? Because it's nice and pleasant view. Right, pleasant view, perhaps. What can we see a lot of dumped down here? Clothes. Right, bits of old clothes and litter and old cups and cans. Right, the water isn't a fantastic colour either, is it? It does look a little bit polluted. Rain. Right, there is rain as well, isn't there? Well spotted. I think it might be time to go back to school. The objective of the field work then was to, for them to actually collect primary data. Mm. Yes. Um, and, that, and again, that's very interesting because I think it, you've illustrated here the fact that field work can happen outside of the school gates and that it doesn't have to be um, field work which always involve, uh, involves a coach trip to the countryside yeah. and, and so on. Because I think if, you, if perhaps you'd done something on the environment in the, in the countryside, it would have perpetuated a, a stereotype mm. that environment equals mm. countryside. Returning from the quayside with the data they've collected, each street is given a score out of 100. Next, they must work out the distance the streets were from the river before they can prove if their theory that the environment is of a better quality nearer the school is correct. For that, they need a scale map to calculate the straight line distance in metres of each street from the school. First we start from the kid, and then we have to find Claremont Grove. 710, wasn't it? Yeah, 710. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is compare the total score and the distance for each street, and we're going to represent each street on something called a scatter graph. Now you might not have used scatter graphs, or you might have seen one, but they're very easy to do. We're going to use our coordinate system, we talked about coordinates before but in a slightly different way, of going along the corridor and then what? Up the, up the stairs. What is it? Yeah. Along the corridor, up the stairs. That's the best way to remember the order that these coordinates need to go in. Again, we're doing... Sam shows the class how to draw a scatter graph using the two pieces of evidence gathered from the first street surveyed. If I go along the corridor at the bottom and I can find 750 must be there, I've got to then go up the stairs and I can see that this line here is where 80 is. So, where 750 and 80 meet, I'm going to put a cross as accurately as I can on that line. 50. Once the data has been entered on the graph, an outline is made around the outside crosses so that a line of best fit can be drawn through the middle. A simple method for proving or disproving their original hypothesis. 
as we get closer to the school, what starts to happen to the schools? Sebastian? It gets better when you get to the school because there's, <coughs> like, there's, it gets better all around, like, it, there's less pollution and stuff. Now, our hypothesis stated that the quality of the environment improves from when you leave the river towards the school. So we said it's worse at the river and gets better up at the school. So is our hypothesis correct? Yes. yes. That was pretty ambitious. Well, that was key stage three ambitious, wasn't it? It was. Um, and it was a little worrying when you originally plan it, as anyone would be, are the children going to be able to grasp it? Um, because nobody likes to be in a situation, where, a situation mm -hmm. where none of the children have got it, or maybe a few have. But in this case, by just going through it step by step, one piece at a time, and also by having it something completely new, so it was a little more exciting to them, um, I think they cope with it really well. What I particularly liked was the way the children had to interpret the axes, so it became almost using maths across the curriculum as well, which I mm. think is really important. And the children were able to interpret that results and come up with a conclusion, they're able to say what the what was happening to the environment. Yeah. The further away they got from the key, which mm -hmm. is. I agree with that because I think the 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 children responded very well to the challenge of it, and at no point did you use the term maths or numeracy. No. No. This is this is geography. We're doing geography, mm. and we are using um, tools to help us um, do better at geography. Findings like this in geography ideally need to be written up and communicated. So Sam uses worksheets to get the class to write down what they set out to prove, how the data was collected and what it revealed. From start to conclusion, the whole topic has taken a day and a half. It's better if you live near a school because they care about the school a lot. Because near and around the school area it has less air pollution, less litter, less graffiti, prettier and more decorated houses and pleasant views. Can you tell us what you wrote, please? I think this is because that there aren't as many houses near the river and people would t take more care, care of it if there were more houses. Right, so Ella went beyond just considering the criteria as they were and she came up with an explanation for the whole thing. Perhaps the reason is that there are more houses the closer you get to the school. That's what you said, wasn't it? And so perhaps if people live in an area, then they'll take more care of it. Thank you very much, you three. Give them a clap. Clearly, they've done the scattergrass very well, and you took it one stage further, you talked about mm. the best fit line. And then there was the last part of or the last lesson where you were doing the interpretive work um, and you, you gave yourself a, a good deal of time for that didn't you? Yes we had to make sure that the children realised the entire point of the whole unit of work rested on the interpretation of the data mm. that they come up with. They'd come up with or they'd chosen these criteria and um, they'd gone out and done the field work they judged each street, they totalised their scores, they put it on the scatter graph, and now they're actually going to look at what these results actually mean. And in some ways, I think this was a, a real challenge for them, but I know that the children, now that they've finished the unit, actually feel that they got something from it because they pushed themselves, they really did, and the expectations were high, and they managed to, to live up to it. That progression is precisely what um, careful planning and discipline in teaching can result in. Yeah. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a set of comprehensive lesson plans and other supporting materials on the Teachers TV website.